Welcome, welcome, welcome back to another episode of Mom in Process. As always, I'm your host and creator, Amy Cothran. Thank you so much for joining me again today. I'm so excited to have you all here. So excited to be using the new name for the podcast. I know it's been a little bit of a transition period. I'm still getting used to saying this new name, but I'm excited about it. It's a great opportunity for growth within this community. So moving forward, I'm just going to dive right in today. I want to introduce you to another incredible female, another incredible everyday mom guest. And she is far from ordinary. She's far from everyday, but I like to call some of these mom guests, my everyday mom guests, because they aren't a quote expert in a specific field, but I wanted to bring this guest on and have a conversation about community and building a community of your own or finding a community that you fit in and that works for you and that you enjoy being a part of. So today I want to introduce you to Karen Poole. She started Heroic Mama Fitness here in my local area. Well, fairly local to me. And this came from a need, a need that she had for herself. She moved to this area last year, fairly recently. So yep, fairly recently. And she didn't know anybody. She didn't know any women, but she she took all of the things that she's experienced in her life from her personal training to experiences that she's had to her degree that she earned in college. She took all of that, pulled it all together and realized I can build my own community, which is where Heroic Mama Fitness was born. It's her way of sharing her knowledge, sharing her skills with other women as a way to bring them on and build up a community of like-minded women that she can surround herself with. So Heroic Mama Fitness focuses on fitness for moms, working out in the park with your strollers and your kids all together in one cohesive fairly cohesive. I'm sure there's chaos. We talk about that in the episode act, you know, it's the absolute perfect win-win situation where moms are benefiting. She's benefiting Karen herself, but also the kids are benefiting as well. The kids are on a play date. Moms get their mom community and that socialization. And they're also working on their bodies and the kids are seeing the moms make themselves a priority. So there are so many beautiful things that go into what she's offering her local community while she's building her own community of women. So we talk about the challenges of working out with kids and working out with kids in group settings. We talk about what you can do to bring Um, to plan for that, bringing extra snacks. We go into all the details of that. And we talk about what building a community has looked like for her, the trials, the ups and downs, the good and the bad. She talks about how she found community elsewhere before she came to our local area. And I share my story of how I built a community or found a community over the course of the last few years. And there's a lot of correlations between what she's doing with her business and really truly what I'm trying to do with this podcast and this community as well. And so I want to empower you to take action steps in your life to either a find a community that you align with or b build a community. I want to empower you and give you the energy and the motivation to not be afraid to build your own community. If you are struggling to find one, if you're struggling to join one and be a part of one. So grab a cozy beverage and join Karen and I in this conversational journey. Hi, Karen. Welcome to the show. Hi. Thank you so much. I'm good. Thank you so much for coming on today. I'm super excited to have you. I've been following your page, Heroic Mama Fitness, since I I think since you started it, one of my friends had shared it and said, Mm -hmm. everybody has to go check her out. And I know you're not from the area. So she was just definitely trying to give you a shout out and boost your, boost your following, I guess. So (laughs) before we dive into Heroic Mama Fitness and this community that you're building, can you take a couple minutes and introduce yourself to the audience? 
Um, yes, no problem. Thank you, Amy. Um, so I am Karen Poole. Um, I'm originally from Oregon. We moved to the Clarkston area just this last year, I guess 14 months ago. We moved right before um, my second child was born. So I have a four-year-old um, and a 14-month-old. Um, and then my husband is here in town. He works at the hospital. Um, let's see. Yeah, so we moved here and I was looking, kind of looking for a community. So I just started Heroic Mama Fitness because I'd been involved in other mom groups um, mm -hmm. in a few previous towns that we lived in. So I was looking to kind of expand my mom friends since I knew no one in town. Right, right. And so you're yeah. a certified personal trainer, mm -hmm. right? Oh, yes. Yeah, so I am a certified um, personal trainer and group fitness instructor through um, ACE. And then I got my, pre and postnatal certification, um, just this last year too, through girls gone strong. So, okay. um, got certified to help women before and after pregnancy. And then I worked out before and after pregnancy with both my children. So, um, little personal experience and then got certified in that mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Do you think that helped you with mm -hmm. your pregnancies working out before, during, and after, I mean, do you think physical fitness has helped you transition into motherhood and, and where you're at now? Yeah, I definitely think it helped. Um, mm -hmm. with Logan, I think I was, I ran a half marathon at seven months pregnant. Oh my goodness. Um, oh my gosh. Yeah, which I had to pee. <laughs> like, you feel like you have to pee the whole time. It's not, it's not super fun, but I was like running and super active. Um, and then after as well, kind of got back into it. And then, yeah, with Livy, I didn't run as much, but I was um, teaching fit for mom classes in California mm -hmm. um, and exercising. So definitely all the way through till my doctor told me I couldn't like five days before she was born. But mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> um, okay. So yeah, I do feel like it definitely helped. Yeah. I, I love that. I had the best of intentions of working out with Lily, my third um, mm -hmm. all through my pregnancy. And cause I didn't really start taking care of myself until after I had our second, until after I had Olivia and I realized sure. I have to do something like I, I cannot yeah. take care of two kids feeling the way I'm feeling because I was mm. so out of shape and so winded. So my intention was to work out with Lily and I was doing really good. I can't even remember how far in I was. And I was still walking and we were still like active, but not in the way that I really yeah. wanted to, but I was doing some hit workouts and I stepped on the, I was pretty pregnant actually, uh, because I remember my belly was sticking out and I tripped on a oh, stool yeah. cause I was doing something I shouldn't have been oh. doing. And I tripped <laughs> on a stool and I fell sideways, not forwards, but I fell sideways, but I broke my finger. Okay. <laughs> I fell and I oh, broke ow. my finger and I was like frustrated oh, yeah. and embarrassed. And I have really bad round ligament pain when I'm pregnant too. And so it was making that worse. And then I was oh, like, yeah. I can't be jumping around, you know, with all this. And then I broke my finger. I was like, I'm yeah. done. This is dumb. <laughs> but I still was like oh, moving no. and physical, you know, trying to be physically active, just not in the way that I really wanted to. And I think. I think it's because I didn't really know how to be physically active in a good way yeah. or a safe way while pregnant. So maybe we can touch about on, maybe we can touch on that in a, in a minute. I'd love to hear kind of your, your take, mm -hmm. but I want to back up and talk about your travels. Cause when you and I were talking before we started recording, yeah. <laughs> uh, you, you were very humble in saying, oh, we moved around quite a bit, but then when we dove into it, like you guys really moved around a lot, which led you to we did. building this community. So why don't you talk about that and what you were doing work-wise? Cause I think that paints a really good picture for everybody of, of how you ended up where you are now today in building heroic mama fitness. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. So I'll start at the beginning kind of college graduation. Um, I, my degree is in marketing originally, marketing a business. Um, so my husband got a job in California in Roseville near Sacramento. 
Um, so we moved there. I ended up working, um, for a nonprofit there for a little bit, just doing business administration, um, some writing, um, and then kind of just in the summers worked for a professional tennis team. Um, always liked sports, um, running, played basketball and volleyball, um, played basketball in college. So just trying to kind of keep in that, um, arena. So I did some social media for them for two seasons, um, then we moved again. So we moved to a rural town in California, um, which is two hours north of San Francisco Bay Area. Um, so I was looking for a new job. I just gotten my personal training certification, actually, I think right before we moved, because I was thinking about doing it when we were in Roseville. Mm-hmm. So I got certified in um, Ukiah and then started working at the gym we went to, which was Anytime Fitness. So just started training a client here and there, um, Mm -hmm. just kind of on the side, I was still working remote, um, for my other administration job. Um, then it kind of like did grow a little bit. So I had more clients and then I added teaching classes. Um, so group fitness classes, like four or five times a week, usually. Um, so that was fun. Then we moved again. So Oh my gosh. <laughs> two, years. two years is the average. So we were everywhere almost two years. I'll just okay. say that. So I don't have to say every time we moved, but, mm-hmm. um, so then we moved to Portland for a different job. We almost moved to New Mexico. Anyways, job came up in Portland. So we moved to Portland. Um, and that is when I ended up um, putting my resume in. Cause I'd always thought it would be fun to work at Nike. Um, just with a staffing agency. That's how like 50% of their employees are through a staffing agency. It's kind of mm-hmm. crazy. Um, um, ended up working on their um, Nike training, Nike running and Nike app, um, more the publishing side. So publishing workouts, I was mostly on their Nike training club app. So publishing workouts and any of like the marketing that went into their feed, mm-hmm. um, which is really fun to work on like the backside of that and seeing how they put their workouts together. Um, from a trainer perspective and got to test a few here and there, which was fun. Um, so that while I was working at Nike was when I had Logan, um, my first, um, took four months off and then went back to work. Um, but like I told you before, I was just kind of missing Logan the whole time. And I had a one hour commute both ways, usually. So two hours a day commuting. And then if I went to the office, like 10 hours away from him, so tiny, just like mm-hmm. your first baby too. I don't know. You're like so attached. I'm really attached to my second one, but just, you yeah. know, nothing. And you're figuring everything out. Um, and my boss was really nice. She let me work like part-time from home, part-time in the office. But anyway, when that contract ended, I kind of just decided, um, I was probably going to stay home with them. Um, I guess, and I'd been in an interview and the interviewer kind of told me, you sound like you want to stay home with your kid, which maybe just made me realize <laughs> that I really did want to stay home with my kid. She's like, you're trying to do all this work from home so you can be with your kid. Um, yeah. I, I, so, lo- I love yes. that story. I love that. It's like the interviewer <laughs> is actually the one that's like, mm, I don't know if you really yeah. want a job right now. Maybe you should focus on that. You're like, oh, right. light bulb moment. It was yeah. Kind of, <laughs> yeah. Like, the interview itself was interesting because it was a girl. I'd gone to all these Nike events in San Francisco when we lived near there. Mm-hmm. Um, and she'd worked there and then she ended up working in Portland and coming back. And so we kind of knew each other. So then I felt like I was maybe oversharing in the interview. But, oh, I've done yeah, that before. So like yeah. Kind of a friend. Yeah. And then she was just like, I don't think you really want this. And, you know, with Nike, there's like 20 people that want the job. So, you know, or a hundred people, but you know, right. The interviewing. So. Anyway, right. it all ended up working out. So then that is when I was like, okay, I have all this free time and ended up joining the Fit for Mom in Portland. I'd been following them for a while. I just hadn't gone because I was working. So what um, is, can you explain what um, so, Fit for Mom is? Yeah, could you explain what that okay. is for um, for everybody in case they don't know? Because I, I coming from yeah. a very rural area, like I've never heard of that, but I'm also, yes. you know, so do you want to explain? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so- um, fit for mom is kind of like the franchise version of what I'm doing here. So okay. it's, you bring your kids in, in strollers with you to work out. Um, they also have like specific classes for prenatal if you're pregnant and, um, postnatal as well, but also they keep renaming them, you know, in California, there's a body boost, but you classes you can go to without your kids. So okay. whatever phase of life you're in, um, like in California, they did a 
without kids at eight o'clock at night because most people's kids were in bed. So they would hold mm-hmm. a class from eight to nine at night, um, which is kind of fun. Um, but I always, I never went to those cause I'm always with my children. So we always right. went to their stroller strides or stroller bar. So all the moms come, you bring your kids in a stroller, uh, meet at the park or indoors if weather's bad, but in California, pretty much always in the park. Um, and in Portland, we had like half the year in the park and then half the year in either, well, the one I went to, they did it in a church or the church gym, anywhere they could find, or the mall. Like they actually use malls like all over the country too. And you just, you do stations through the mall. Okay. Um, so it's with like resistance bands, body weight. So you're not lugging around huge weights, but mm-hmm. you can work out with your kids. So I love that. And so if it's a a franchise, there should be a website. There should be a website for them to find if there's like one in their area. Okay. So I'll put that in the show notes over the U.S. Okay. That's really good to know. Okay. Yeah. I mean, in Portland, I think there was three different, three or four different franchises because Portland is so big. So there's Mm -hmm. one in Gresham and one in Happy Valley and one in Portland. So um, bigger cities, I would say normally have them. Um, yeah. Okay. But anyway, so I looked into franchising with them and our, so I hit my mic. Our, yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> city is too small, but, um, yes. So that is where I decided to start my own, um, heroic mama fitness business. Yeah. So you started, um, you, st- you joined this so, group back when you were in uh, Portland first. Is that when you started? Right. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I'll, I'll continue that story. Yeah. So yeah. I joined in Portland. Um, loved it. I think I was going like every single day to whatever class they had. Um, you know, sometimes they do crafts after class with the kids. So you'd work out and the kids would do crafts, play at the playground. Um, so, you know, your hour workout, you could be out for whatever you want. You can stay an extra hour at the park or you could do a craft, Mm -hmm. um, with your kids, which was fun. Um, and then sometimes they do mom nights out too. mom's nights out. Mm -hmm. um, without your kid, which is fun, but yeah, so just that's the community building part. But then of course we decided to move again. So we moved to San Ramon. Yeah. (laughs) We moved again. Um, (laughs) so we moved to California, back to California. Um, so San Ramon is in the Bay area. So we were closer to San Francisco this time. Um, but I didn't know anyone. So I looked for the fit for mom. Like that was the first thing I do. I think we got there, and a week later I had joined fit for mom. They're like, Oh, you just moved here. And I was like, I'm not even going to unpack a box. Like I just got to go work out with my kid. Yeah. So, um, that was, that was fun. Um, but yeah, so that was 2019, right? This is 2020 is when COVID mm-hmm. hit. So, um, basically like my whole time spent in California, the moms from fit for mom and their kids were like our only friends. Cause of lockdown. But the nice thing about that too, was we were working out in parks. So even during COVID, we could most of the time work out. They actually shut the parks down for a couple months right? Um, and had park police like staffing you. But <laughs> so dumb. when you could go to a so park dumb. again, you could work out. Like we were 20 feet apart and they told us we had to wear masks in the park. And I was like 20 feet apart, but Oh my god. It gosh. is what it is. I'm glad right. we're like past that a little bit so we can work out in the park and be okay. Right. Right. Um <laughs> but yeah, so and then I ended up teaching classes um there in January. So 2021. No, 20, yeah, 2021. Yeah, no. All these years are going to <laughs> together. Right? We moved it. Yeah. 2020. I started teaching classes there okay. before we moved back here. So I taught basically till I had. Olivia down there. I started teaching in January and I had her in November. And I think I taught her went to classes till five days before she was born. Mm-hmm. And then my, my doctor thought I was preeclamptic. I wasn't, but she was like, you're not working out. Cause I was really mad. I went to the doctor at nine. That we're just going to do a blood pressure check. I was like, great. And then I'll go to my workout class. Mm-hmm. She's like, you're not working out. And I was like, yeah, I am. And she's like, no, you're not. So we had no, I didn't go work out, but I wasn't very planned to be there. I was stressed because we were moving two weeks after having a baby. Right. Um, yeah. Like my blood pressure was slightly elevated. Anyway, it all ended up working out and she was like born natural five days later. But um, mm-hmm. that was me working up to like the very last moment. And okay. I think for my sanity, I have to have that. Like mm-hmm. I'm just a nicer person when I work out. Um, mm-hmm. 
But then I already gave it away, but shocker, we had a baby and two weeks later <laughs> we had moved to Clarkson because my husband got a job closer to family. Mm-hmm. And with two kids, I decided I needed family. So right. <laughs> here right. we are. And then, um, yeah, I didn't know anyone. I wanted to start this community of people, um, moms specifically, um, that just needed that as well. And yeah, I was like staying up late at night trying to figure out how to start a business. Cause even if I have a business degree, but I've never started one. And then yeah, just spending right. time doing all of that and still probably messing things up along the way. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, cause you, you mentioned that you looked into franchising, you know, doing what, you know, like what, you yeah. know, was mm-hmm. fit for mom. Um, so you looked into franchising that, yeah. which I think is a great first step. And unfortunately yeah. we're too small, which is wonderful and sucky at the same time. Like we yeah. don't have a target, I think, <laughs> you know, oh, I know. Like, <laughs> so, so sad. Um, <laughs> Yeah, because they were saying you had to have a hundred thousand people within a five mile radius. So wow. yeah. Um yeah, not even close. <laughs> right. But right, which is um, really surprising to me. That's really yeah. surprising to me because the classes aren't like that big. I mean, we don't need to get into all the details of that, but essentially your yeah. classes aren't that big. It's not like you need hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. You yeah. just need a small group of people that are willing to commit to something on a regular yeah. basis. So it's interesting. Soon. So let's, let's talk about that. So you pivoted from, okay, yeah. franchise isn't an option. And you're, so then yeah. you thought, okay, I can do this. I know what I'm, you know, so at what point did you decide I'm going to start something myself? I'm just going to do it. I think probably just one of those sleepless nights when I had a baby and I was like, I need something yeah. to do. And I, I don't know, I cannot pinpoint the exact moment, but I think I just mm-hmm. kept thinking like, everyone's like, well, you have these ideas and you just think about them and you just need to do it. You know, like mm-hmm. if you fail, so what? And like, luckily we're in a position that I had some money I can spend on this. And if it fails, I've learned a valuable lesson. And I, you know, I can practice using my business degree and my fitness training at the same time. So I'm like getting fulfilled that way, but I also don't have to leave my kids behind. And it's so cute. I can probably talk about it later, but like they work out with you and Logan will do push-ups with me. And over Christmas break here, we were in the gym and most moms are out of town. So it was just me and the kids one morning and I had him put me through a workout and it was the cutest thing ever. And he was having me do frog, frog jumps and all these things, but like mm-hmm. they're watching you. I mean, you know, like they copy everything, but it's just, it's a door. Even Olivia, like she's just not walking, but she'll do squats with me when she sees me do squats and she'll like grab the resistance band. And it's like just the cutest and fun. And there's also moments where they're screaming, but that's kids for you. Right. <laughs> just keep working out through it. Right. Um, so I want to, I want to talk about that actually really quick, because if moms are thinking like, I have three kids, for example, and me going and taking all three kids and Lily, my two-year-old, oh boy. Oh, she is busy body. (laughs) Like Gracie, my oldest would be all about it. She'd be like up there leading the class and telling everybody to do burpees. And Olivia would be probably playing with the other kids, which is totally fine. But Lily, my goodness, I'm not sure how she would do. So (laughs) how do you address that? What do you say to the moms that are feeling kind of that sort of fear of like, I can't take my baby. What if something happens? What if there's like, what if they have a blowout diaper or what if they're crying the whole time? I will give you everything. So for me, like this morning, for instance, um, a Livy has poops in her diaper during class every day this week. So I, you stop and change it. Not a big deal. Everyone else has kids with a diaper. Um, she was super tired this morning because she only took two half hour naps yesterday. So she's getting really tired at the end of class. So, um, I mean, I was teaching, but you take a break to feed her. So I was still teaching, but she was like breastfeeding on me while I was doing hip bridges on the floor and she fell asleep on me and then I put her away. But I mean, she was crying and fussing before, but sometimes, I mean, you just know if they're hungry, they're tired. Like the nice thing is, and other moms have done it too. Like you can take 10 minutes to breastfeed feed them during the workout. Like, I'm not going to be like, no, leave your kids screaming. But also (laughs) if they're just screaming because they want your attention, you can let them scream for 10 minutes. Like Logan in California, not as much now. 
Um, with Fit for Mom, they were more strict. It is franchise. Like your kids had to be in the stroller for most of class if they were younger. So mm-hmm. just like they cry, they cry. Like you deal with it, which you're welcome to do in my classes. But I let the older ones be out some. Um, I think there's a group in Moscow actually mm-hmm. um, that the kids come out and exercise with you. So it's what you're comfortable with. But mm-hmm. um, so if they're older, they can either be out working out with you or you let them play on the park if you're comfortable. Totally up to you. Mm -hmm. Um, this is a class for moms. I'm trying to make it inclusive. Um, but yes, I've had blowouts. Um, another instructor, I wasn't potty training, but in California, her kid was potty training. She run him to a tree during class while she was teaching. Like you just do what you do. Mm -hmm. Yes. You may miss a few workout moves, but if you come for an hour workout and you get 40 minutes or 50 minutes or 30 minutes, like you still got that workout in and you're Mm -hmm. out of the house and like here in summer or when it's warmer. We actually were working out outside through the beginning of December almost. It was so nice this mm-hmm. year. Yeah. Um, but you're getting your kids outside and my kids are better when they're outside. Like Livy will just try at 14 months. She'll point at the door. She'll cry if she has to come back inside. Like she just wants to be outside playing, stomping, running in the snow. Yeah. Like anything. So, I mean, you just need to come. Like kids will cry. Nobody, mm-hmm. nobody bats an eye, especially like Logan would cry every time I taught in California. And everyone's like, we don't even notice, like, cause you're so used to your own kids crying too. It's just when it's yours, you get all nervous about it. Cause I was always apologizing and everyone was like, we don't even notice like ours are crying too. So right. just realizing that I mean, kids do that. Logan has thrown huge tantrums cause he's four and he thinks he knows everything, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, um, you deal with it. You move on. You keep doing your bicep curls, I mean, whatever right. you need to do. But and yeah, that's the my, beauty of it because it's designed yes. for moms. It's not, I mean, as much as it's designed for women, it's, but it's moms, that's the label. So that means yeah. I loved how you said that, like it's designed to be incredibly inclusive. And so everybody comes in this like-minded community with the understanding that everybody has kids and things happen when you have children. And I love that it's an hour long. So like you said, if you get 30 minutes in, if you get 40 minutes in, you're still getting 30, 40 minutes of movement. And you're also Mm -hmm. still, there's so much more that we can unpack about that, that there's so much more that goes into it other than like the physical fitness aspect of it. Like your kids are getting socialization and they're seeing mom lead by example and doing all these positive things for her body, make it, you know, she's making the priority to take care of herself and including her family in that priority. And then you're building a network of like-minded women, you know? So, so let's talk about that. You started Heroic Mama Fitness as a way to build a community and to do something that makes you feel good. So how has the journey Mm -hmm. been on building a community? Because that's tough, especially when you're not from this community. (laughs) Yes. So like you touched on it earlier. So, um, Kelsey, I met, um, earlier, but she's been really good. Like meeting people that have come to my classes from the community are great at sharing because they know other people here that would like it or they Mm -hmm. have pregnant friends. Um, but yeah, so from the beginning, like I didn't really know anyone. My sister-in-law has older kids. They're all in school. So she wasn't, you know, it's not a class for her moment in time that she's Mm -hmm. at right now. Um, she's going to the gym without kids. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to start. And like, she's shared a few things. And then I did a few Facebook ads. And then I got one of those big, um, like banner signs. And then I went to the park and I posted it on Instagram and Facebook. And I just worked out Mm -hmm. with my two kids by myself. And I got some strange looks and I got, I've had a lot of people that I've talked to. Um, and then some moms that just came, um, and worked out after seeing me in the park. I even had a mom come from Orofino. Um, she has not consistently come, but she was like, oh, I, I mean, she's an Orofino, so she's not, I mean, yeah. you're not going to make that drive every day, but right. you know, I was like, wow, like, how did you hear about this? I think she'd just seen an ad on Facebook, um, but thought it was a cool idea. And it was fun to have her. Um, but the first, probably at least a month, I think. I basically worked out by myself in the park and posted pictures of myself, like selfieing with With my banner Um, and your banner, like with, with a banner. I love it. It was usually like strapped on. So yeah, if you have a baby, like she was always in the ergo, I was doing workout with her in the ergo baby. Uh So if she wasn't in the stroller, she's strapped on. So you can do a workout with your baby strapped on to you. 
Um, <laughs> but yeah, so then I think one girl came and I was so excited and nervous at the same time. <laughs> just like ecstatic about it for a couple, for a month or two. And then, um, mm-hmm. but she brought in another friend and then another girl just came like randomly at one day and we laugh about it now because she's kept coming, but you know, she's like, you were just there working out in the park. And I think I made your day. I'm like, you did, you made like my whole month. Cause I was like starting to feel a little discouraged. Like I know it takes a while, but I was like, man, like I thought a few more moms would at least try it out. Um, but I mean, from marketing, people have to see something 10, 20 times before they Tom, because even um, that girl, another Kelsey, there's been three Kelsey's that have come to my group. So a lot of different Kelsey's. <laughs> um, Fun. But she, yeah, so not always the same one I'm talking about. But um, yeah, she was like, yeah, I just kept liking your posts and I kept following you. And then like finally just decided to come one day. So mm-hmm. um, that was really fun. And yeah, she has three kids. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, and then slowly, I don't, you know, things just start to happen and it's growing more and more. Um, I think my husband had told a few people at the hospital and they knew some moms. So they told, um, them, um, so a lot of word of mouth and then, yeah, just a few people saw us in the park. I tried to do them before library story times. This is mm-hmm. where your library, um, comment came in. Cause I was like, maybe they'll see me <laughs> before. Yeah. And then sometimes I handed out cards, but I'm terrible. I'm so nervous just talking about it but I would mm-hmm. awkwardly hand out cards to people like, please just come try one. Mm-hmm. Um, and I got a few people that came from that too, but I'm just not, I'm not a good like salesy person. So that's the hardest part for me. Like if you come and work out, it's fun, but like mm-hmm. me just selling it to you is scary. Yeah. Especially when you don't know anyone. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, I genuinely, and when no one was coming. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I feel that to my core, like talking about my podcast or if mm-hmm. somebody's like, oh my gosh, do you have a podcast? I'm like, uh, you know, I don't know. What yeah. should I say? How do I talk about this? You know, and I'm really, um, I get very self-conscious when I start trying to open up a conversation about it because I'm like, I don't want to sell anybody on it. And I, I just, I know that it's going to help somebody. I know that if people listen to it, they're going to find Mm -hmm. something in this podcast, maybe not every episode that they can relate to, but there's going to be something I'm like, just listen to the podcast, you know, but it's so hard to put yourself out there, especially with something that is so new and is still growing. And I, genuinely want to encourage you that, and this is something that I'm trying to tell myself that, you know, just keep doing that. Like keep putting your card out there. Like Mm -hmm. every time you go to the park or anytime you go to any of these groups, I keep some of my cards, um, just in my car or in my wallet. I just have like the little square ones. So just keep doing it because you'll get more confident in it. And like yours is with what you're doing with, you know, with moms and their workouts, like this is something that all moms are going to be like, Oh my gosh, this sounds so much fun with a podcast. People are like, what? Yeah. What? Like a lot of moms <laughs> haven't ever even listened yeah. to podcasts. So I'm like, well, a podcast is, yeah. and they're like, well, what do you, you're just, you mean you just sit there and talk <laughs> like by yourself? I'm like, yeah, well, yeah, I do. It sounds kind of weird, <laughs> but I mean, I, I want to encourage you to just keep, keep doing that because this is a really amazing journey that you're on. And it's a really amazing opportunity that you're offering to women in this area that have never, maybe never done anything like that before. And so in this community that you're building, have you, have you found a sense of belonging? I mean, how has that been in, in, in building this network that you're, that you're working on? Yeah, I have definitely found like a ton of really good friends. I want to hang out with everyone. COVID has made that a little harder. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, I say around here, people are less concerned about it recently. Um, yeah. But so I haven't like normally in Portland, like we had people over all the time. And if I had all these moms, I'd be like, come over, let's have a party at my house. But you can't really do that, especially as a business owner, since it is a business, like it looks very bad if you do that. Right. Um, but <laughs> We definitely hang out often, like an hour after if we're at the park talking, um, we did a, like, go check out the Christmas lights at Locomotive Park, um, with your kids. So I'm trying to add a few more like out of class opportunities to get together. Mm -hmm. Um, I know there's other moms that have gotten together outside of class. Um, 
It's interesting because a lot of the moms that come to class are not from here because they're definitely looking for a community. Yeah. Um, oh, it's that's interesting. Okay. So yes, like my market at the moment is not people that are from here and I would love it to be people that are from here and maybe they either don't need it or maybe they have family that watches their kids while they go to the gym. I have had a few people and that's fine. Like their gym time is their me time. I mean, I would love that too. When I get to go without them, I'm like, oh, this is glorious, but it's also fun to be with them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I like most of the consistent mom right now, there's like 50 and maybe it's like 60% not from here and like 40% mm-hmm. um, that are, but the ones I've talked to about it, they're like, yeah, I was just like looking for something because they've said, which I've heard too. And I've lived in one other more rural community, but um, it's just hard to meet people here. It's like a an interesting town like that. Just people, maybe they just have their groups. Yeah. Um, so it's very hard. So yeah, the really consistent ones, I just had a mom, she actually just had a baby three days ago. Um, but she joined that like 30 weeks pregnant. That was her first class. And she mm-hmm. did it all the way to like 38 weeks. And then took a break um and just had a baby she's looking forward to coming back but yeah she was like this is amazing and just super excited about it because she hadn't been able to find it you know just even a group of moms and I keep saying too it's like 50 percent about the workout and it's 50 percent talking to other moms and realizing that every kid tantrums all the time and every kid has blow-ups and it's like a tough job no matter what or if you're potty training like you can ask that question and you're going to get like three different responses probably because everyone does it differently, but just knowing that you can do it your way or you can try someone else's way, um, is nice. And they come out, like it comes out organically during the workout. People are joking or talking about things or it'll come out after, but just having moms to talk with is great. Like even if we didn't do a workout, it would be fun, but the workout is great too. (laughs) Yeah. So that's, I was telling you that before we started recording that I love gathering with women, like-minded women, but this is gathering Mm -hmm. with like-minded women that you still get to chat with. The kids still get to play and you have intention behind it. You have the physical movement behind it without any expectations, you know, do what you can as much as you can in whatever way you can. And with you being a certified, you know, personal trainer and the, with your pre and postnatal care and, and all of that, I'm just surmising that you probably are able to go in and say, okay, I see that you're 30 weeks pregnant. This is the, this is the movement that we're doing right Mm -hmm. now, but this is another option for you. So you have, is that, is that true? Like, so if you're, yeah, you know, postpartum or, you know, these, you know, don't do these ab crunches right now. Instead, let's do X. (laughs) Yeah. Like for anything, but no matter what, cause you're a mom, right? So my left shoulder is ruined because my children prefer this side to nurse on and they both nurse forever. So like my left shoulder <laughs> just off and hurts. Um, but if there's something you can't do, like, I'm never like, you have to do this move. Um, there's yeah. always options. Um, ask me to modify. Usually I try to give two or three, um, ways to do the move, or if it's on the ground and you don't want to be on the ground, um, like a standing version or something else you can do. Okay. Um, but yeah, I definitely have moves if you're very pregnant. Um, you know, if you're just not feeling it that day or, um, postpartum, but it all, it all depends on, you know, how your birth was or how you're feeling. Um, so you just have to tell me or just mod. Yeah. I will give you modifications. Just say, oh, it's not working. Or you can even you can skip a move if you really don't, you know, want to do it or you need a break. Like you need to catch your breath because you're 36 weeks pregnant and you can't breathe anymore because your lungs are being pressed up by your baby. Um, you know, yeah. you can walk in place instead of, um, doing high knees or yeah. something, but yeah, there's modifications for everything. And I think most of the time someone is modifying something for whatever reason, pregnancy, injury, you're tired because you didn't sleep last night, just mm-hmm. whatever, um, that may be, but yeah. I love, and you showed up and that's important. I love the pictures that you post, especially when the, I don't know, especially when the moms are like breastfeeding and there's like a baby over here and they're still trying to do like a workout. I'm like, yes, you (laughs) go girl. Because here's the thing. You will literally be doing that stuff at home. If you were to be working out, you would still be doing all of those things. So why not do it with a group of women? Why not just like for the social 
community aspect of it. And then why not do it for the accountability side too? Because you're probably going to push yourself a little bit harder if you're with another group of women and you're going to hold yourself accountable to go. Maybe it's once a week or twice a week. And those women are going to message you and say, Hey, I haven't seen you in two weeks. Is everything okay? You know, so there's like an accountability caring accountability, not like, well, you didn't show up. So how dare you? But like, there's this caring accountability. Yeah. Behind it. So if you're going to be at home breastfeeding and tackling a toddler, why not go outside when they're going to be able to run around a little more freely and play with other kids, which actually helps them keep them a little more entertained. If that's mm-hmm. what people want to do and get them out of the stroller. Yeah. I mean, it's just, is like such a win-win situation. And as a, as a mom, I feel like we're we're needing more of those win-win situations versus a compromise type scenario. Like this is more yeah. win-win, not quite so compromise. I always feel if I do workouts during the day at home with my kids, it, it's a true test of my patients. Like it's a real, which is why oh, I yeah. do it in it's the hard. mornings now. <laughs> like I, I get up before the kids get up because I want that me time But if I were to go outside of the home and do it with another group of people and they also had kids, I probably wouldn't even see the older two. They would just be playing or doing a workout with me or doing a workout and then going and playing and then coming back. And then, you know, I just feel like it would be easier. And I, I know it's hard to get out of the house. I know it's hard to pack the kids up to go. I mean, have you, have women talked to you about Mm -hmm. that? Like the act of actually getting here was a feat and a workout in itself. Yeah. Yes. Definitely. Sometimes a feat and a workout. And one, I was having an issue. I still have a bit of an issue, but because we need to be inside Mm -hmm. because it's so cold. I mean, it was snowing and like 19 degrees outside or 15. Um, but the one space I found was a school around here in elementary school. And they're like, you can use it, but only from eight to nine 15. And I was like, that seems like too early. And we tried it for a few weeks and a few moms made it. And I was amazed, but then it was my kids that were not waking up. They normally wake up before seven. They'd sleep until seven 30. And I had to leave by like seven 40 to get there and be prepared. Yeah. Um, it's definitely a feat. It doesn't matter if it's nine 30, it can still be like a feat in an argument or one's trying to nap. But, Mm -hmm. um, I think it's just doing it like with Logan. Um, my first, I mean, I took him everywhere. I definitely did not stay at home. I'm just like, I want to do something. You're going with me. I didn't leave him a lot of places, but he went with me. So, I mean, he naps really well in the stroller, but he didn't have a choice. Like he went to fit for mom classes or he went running because I was running a lot. Um, I still enjoy running. I just don't seem to do it as much. That's mm-hmm. one of my goals for this year. Um, but yeah, cause I've had moms like, Oh, but my kid doesn't do good in the stroller. Or my kid doesn't nap in the stroller. And I was like, well, if you do it enough, like I know they cry some, but they get used to it. And I feel like it's almost, it's like two weeks. If you do it with, for two weeks with them, they start to realize like, Oh, this is a routine. Oh, I'm stuck doing this. Or like, mm-hmm. Oh, my stroller is not that bad. I get snacks when I'm in here and I get to look at the other kids when I'm in here. Um, but I mean, most of the time when they're walking, they're out at the park or they're working out with their moms. Um, Mm -hmm. I like that better because I think the kids get outdoor time. Um, and our parks are smaller, so you can see your kids most of the time. Um, yeah, Yeah. going to lose your kid while you're at our workout. Um, (laughs) right, right. What can moms bring or what should they bring or what can they take to best set themselves up for success as best as possible. You know, you mentioned snacks. <clears throat> I'm a big yes. proponent of snacks and, and usually I'll take like yeah, you can... one and I'm like, when it's done, it's done. I don't have any more. It's, I'm not going to sit here and feed you the whole time, but what is your take on things that are yeah. work for moms to bring to plan for? Yeah. I mean, I would say definitely snacks. That depends. I do think I've given my kids too many snacks and I'm trying to back off the snack train, but, um, that also is focusing on making sure they eat everything on their plate in the morning and more like my four-year-old just is picky, like mm-hmm. his dad and doesn't want to eat anything. Um, whereas my 14 month old is like, give me all the food all the time. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so number one, I would say snacks, um, or healthy snacks. Um, if they have a favorite toy, um, bring that or, um, a book. If you have a baby and you have a baby carrier, 
carrier, I would bring that because often you can do the whole workout and they're super happy um, in the baby carrier. You just won't be doing, you know, planks on the ground with your baby. We'll do a different exercise for you if you have your baby strapped on. Um, depending what kids are in class too, sometimes I will read them a story if they're in the stroller or we'll do bubbles during class. You can also bring bubbles if you um would like, but I try to bring some activities for kids. It just kind of depends if they're all older and they're all running around at the parks and you often just get to enjoy your workout, but you know, Mm -hmm. um, the babies are a little different, but, um, I mean, I would say mainly snacks. You want to bring diapers and extra change of clothes, like all the things to be prepared when things happen. But I mean, being outside too, a lot of times they're a little calmer. I mean, we're indoors. Um, this winter I'm using um, a church later. So we're nine 30 right now, not the 8am mm-hmm. class in the gym. We're back to nine 30 and moms can make it. Um, but yeah, just anything that soothes, soothes them. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, I think honestly, it's mostly just getting them into the routine of doing it because mm-hmm. once they're used to doing it, usually they're excited. Like Logan wanted to go every day to stroller strides from probably when he was like 18 months and could talk, like could get really excited about it because they get to see their friends and they make a friend, right? Usually every time. So it's like an exciting thing for them. Or when people yeah. didn't show up to my class a few times months ago, I pretty much haven't worked out by myself except for Christmas break because um, we have enough moms now, but he was like, mom, you need someone to work out with you. And I was like, I know I do. Maybe you can work out with me, but it was just cute. Cause he like, he knows he's like, you work out now and I play. So yeah. it's yeah. just cute, but it's building that routine for yeah. them. So, and then they get yeah. used to that. So we have formed kind mm-hmm. of organically out here where we are, um, a mom's group on Thursdays. And it was like kind of homeschool moms, but any moms can come. It's just during the day. And so unless you have young kids, if they're school age kids, most of the other moms are working or whatever, but we, you know, we include anybody that wants to come and we were, this was what started out as our library group, but thanks to COVID, we don't have story time anymore. And we have a teeny tiny library here. One of my mom oh, friends, yeah. they ha- she has eight kids. So you get this teeny tiny library, you get a couple of moms. I mean, that place is packed and the kids want to play, but oh, you're in yeah. the library and you're like, don't run, Shh, be quiet. No running in the library. Yeah. Don't, don't throw the books around. And then you're just, and the, all the kids want to do is play and see their friends and all the moms want to do is play and see their friends, you know, talk and hang out. Um, And so one of my other mom friends in this group, she kind of coordinated all of us just meeting at the park once a week now, rain or shine, because we're under a gazebo. And, you know, we're like building resilience with the kids, Mm -hmm. even if it's cooler weather, but you were right. I mean, it was really nice up until December, right before Christmas. And so- it's wonderful. That sense of community is so wonderful. This, this gathering. And the only thing that we're lacking is like the physical movement, but I'll say a lot of the times, not everybody, but there's a a couple of the moms that uh, walk or run before we all meet and then we all go to the library. So it actually ends up being like a half day almost a full day thing, mm-hmm. which is so much fun. It's so much fun to just know yeah. once a week, even if I'm having a bad day, or even if I'm having a bad week, I just know I have one day that I get to see other women and other moms and, um, the kids get a play date if we're, you know, we're homeschooling. So I feel like some days, some weeks we're lacking some of that socialization for them to Mm -hmm. fill their buckets, you know, their social bucket. So I just know once a week, we're going to go see everybody. You're going to see their, your friends and they're all ages of kids, which I love also because they get to socialize with kids of all ages. So I, I love what you're doing and I love what you're building. Mm. And I love so much that you decided to build your own community you're like, okay, I'm no, I'm new here. I don't know how to meet new people. So I'm just going to be super vulnerable. I'm just going to throw this out here. I'm going to start this and try it and see what happens. And then you stuck with it. And now you have 
this consistent following and these consistent women that are, you know, looking to you for postpartum care now. I mean, it just, that has to feel so good for yeah. you to have had somebody <laughs> come on as a pregnant mama and then be so looking forward to her and have an outlet for her postpartum fitness. I mean, how does that feel? Yeah, no, it's awesome. And she like that very mom, cause she, you know, she's always going to her doctor's appointments because she's pregnant. She's like, I told my OBGYN about you and about your group and hope to share. And I was like, oh, that's great. Like she's like promoting it too, to the community, which is wonderful. But yeah, just yeah. the fact that like, she's excited to come back and she was like, oh, I miss you guys. And um, yeah, just making all these new connections is it's great. Yeah. Yeah. I, I want to empower women because I feel like, I feel like loneliness is something that we really struggle with being as stay at home moms. And, uh, we, we don't attend a church in the area and that is a great way that people can form their yeah. own communities and, and meet like-minded people. But in this area, and I don't know if it's just this community, but you are right that it's really tough for us to meet other people, especially if you're not from around here. Um, mm -hmm. I also don't feel like there is a huge stay at home mom uh, community. Yeah, I don't like, so. there's so many women that work here. So to find women that are at home is really tough. And I really struggle. This is just my personal story, my personal journey. I'm from here and I struggle to find stay at home mom groups because everybody worked and we didn't, we don't yeah. attend church. And so that is where a lot of people that I knew already had known each other is through church gatherings and their fellowship within that community. And I'm like, but I'm not going yeah. to attend your church. And so I, I want to be in your group. Like I want to be friends, but I don't know how to do it. So yeah. um, I just kept going to the library because that's what we had available to us out here. And I just kept talking to people and kept asking questions and getting myself really vulnerable with new people and strangers. And, and it's yeah. taken a few years, but now I have some really beautiful friends and that's very similar to what you're doing. I mean, you started a business where you're hoping people can come to you. And so I want to empower women. Like mm -hmm. it takes the, the point of all of this is that it takes action, right? It takes doing something about it, whether mm -hmm. it's creating your own group that you then put yourself out there and say, Hey, come join me. Or you take the action steps to going to a group fitness class, like what you have, or the public library, like what I was able to do. And just try. You, you yeah. actually have to try and do something. So where do you want to take this now? What's, what's your next steps with now that it's kind of <laughs> taking off in the last little bit and, and growing, what are you hoping to do now? Yeah, well, I am hoping since it's growing a little bit like after winter, cause winter is very hard probably to get newer people, but, mm -hmm. um, since last summer, spring, summer, I was working out by myself in the park. I was like, now there will be like a nice core group of people. Um, so we'll be working out in the park a little more organized and just trying to grow that. Um, yeah, I would like to add a few more classes. I kind of, I mean, I've changed it up a few weeks, like here, even this week, I'm trying to do two outside weather permitting. Cause it's so more of a lunchtime, like we're doing a 1230 class this week. We're doing a run or walk tomorrow. And then just a workout at Beachview Park um, this Thursday mm -hmm. at noon. So it's like a different time than we normally do. We normally do 930, but it's, you know, it'll be like 45 degrees by then, which is perfect for working out outside and for kids to not get too cold while they're playing. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm trying to try some different times and see if maybe that gets more moms or mm -hmm. um maybe an evening class. I keep thinking about that. I don't know if I'm ready for that with a one-year-old, but, um, I've had a few moms that were interested, but like you said, they're working. There's moms that are working, but they might be interested in an evening one. So mm -hmm. it just gets tricky. Cause you have to do it at like five 30, anything later than five 30 and you're way past kids' bedtimes and their yeah. cranky moments. And yeah, so I haven't committed to that, but I would love to get more moms to come. Um, I think right now, you know, we have between like three to five, like consistent moms showing up. So I think there's about 
like 10 core moms maybe, but you know, things happen. You're not at every class. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's been fun. And hopefully we'll do a few more like themed or fun workouts. Sometimes we did a pumpkin workout at Thanksgiving. That was fun. I brought pumpkins. I saw some pictures of that. Eight. It looked so cute. <laughs> it looked so cute. I thought it was such a great idea. Yeah. It was cute. And we were also sore after because we're normally doing resistance bands, but like hoisting a pumpkin overhead is just a whole new yes. um, territory. So that was fun, like mixing it up a little. And we've been indoors. So I brought some actual dumbbells to class. I mean, you can still do resistance bands. We do both, but just mm-hmm. trying to mix it up a little bit. Yeah. Um, and you do yoga. But yeah. I want to sometimes, but, um, I've seen you post that right. you guys offer yoga classes every once in a while. Yeah. So, um, one of the girls, um, in town, um, the moms was at Joe Logan's gymnastics class. And she was like, Oh, I, I kept, I kept mentioning my classes. And then she said she was getting her yoga training and she had to do student teaching. So I was like, perfect. <laughs> do student teaching with me. So she just yes. got certified in, um, the end of December or first of January. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, she's still offering classes. Um, she's out of town this week. But she's still trying to do classes on Tuesday, which is great because I am the least flexible person in the world and I need yoga (laughs) so much, so much. I love Um, that you can admit that. So it's helpful. (laughs) It's bad. She's always like, do you have your blocks and your strap? And here's how you modify this, which is perfect. (laughs) Like I need it, but I feel so much better after. Um, Yeah. But I think, yeah, I would like to offer more class of versions. I did a, I taught a stroller bar class, um, in San Ramon. That was really fun. So I'm hoping mm-hmm. to add that. I've got to get some bar balls, which you don't even have to have a ball. You can bring like your kid's soccer ball, mm-hmm. um, or use a water bottle. But, um, mm-hmm. so I'm thinking of adding a few different just class types and seeing how that goes. But yeah, I just, honestly, I'd like to see more moms come because I think it's awesome. And, um, yeah, I think they would love it. <laughs> so what is your, I, I love that. I love that you're trying to add some variety in too, by the way. Um, I think that's great because maybe people don't want to do, you know, the walk jog option. Maybe they're really interested in yoga. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's their jam. So, you know, you could do something yeah. just off having a variety of options, I think will really impact the uh, participation that you have. Cause it mixes it up a little bit, but so yeah. what is your I want to hear your favorite moment so far on this journey. And then I want to hear your least favorite moment on this journey. Oh, okay. I think my favorite moment is when one of the moms was like, I have biceps because of you. Thank you for <laughs> biceps. And this was like, I don't know, it was a few months ago, but it was just like, no one had told me, like, I've seen these changes in my body yet. And she was like, I have biceps again. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, it's working. So I think just that, I mean, yeah, just validation in that I felt like I was getting stronger, but I hadn't specifically asked anyone, you know, hey, have you seen changes in your body? And just, she said that. And then of course I was like, okay, leave me a review on Facebook. I need people to hear that. Yes. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's just a fun validation of that. Um mm-hmm. I don't know that I've had too many bad moments. Mm-hmm. Worst moment. I think hmm, I get sad when people quit and I've had a few people like start and then kind of bail out. Yeah. And I don't think it's my classes and I think it's their life. But then I'm like, I had so much fun hanging out with you. Mm-hmm. And like, I start to know their kids and it's fun to see them. So I think it's, just, I get sad when they leave or the business side of just figuring everything out as an LLC is just more a struggle and not what I enjoy. I enjoy the teaching classes and the talking to moms. Um, so the hardest part is probably the business side, even though I have a degree in it, it's just like, you have to sit down and do it and your accounting and your expenses and right everything. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that's not, I mean, that's what you went to school for, but where your passion is right now, what you love to do is 
is work with moms and be, you know, and be moving physically and being outside. And so it's to be stuck inside doing the meticulous, you know, day-to-day back end of the business is that's the stuff that people don't always talk about. Like, oh, I love what you're doing. I bet it's so great to be physically active, or I, I love that you're running a podcast or, you know, whatever. And it's like, yeah, that is absolutely my passion. I love doing that, but you don't see what I have to do on the back end. Yeah. <laughs> that part sucks. <laughs> right. Yeah. There's a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I know I've had a few people, you know, they're like, oh, well, it's not free. So I'm not coming. I'm like, well, if you really can't afford it, you can come. Cause I do want every mom to come, but it, it hurts a little bit. Cause I'm like, I'm putting like my heart and soul into this. Yeah. And they're just like, it should be free for everyone. And I'm like, but do you know how many hours I'm putting into this? Yeah. And it's not even the hours. Like, you know, I had to spend my certifications and insurance and, you know, when you're training people, it's a decent amount. So I'm just sometimes it's like oh I just I want to feel like I'm worth something and maybe that's like from the stay-at-home mom like you're not getting paid for anything so I'm like it's nice to feel like someone values me for more than just giving myself away right right yeah Um, the validation side of that I I completely get I mean I love that you're putting yourself out there and saying come it doesn't matter like if you can't pay me then okay but it's still a business. Like it yeah. is still a business and you have, you know, you, you've put a lot of money, like you said, into getting your certifications and you have a lot to offer to help people. And what I think people don't always understand, I know we're kind of getting into the business side of this, but if you're helping them and then they're helping you by paying you, you can then help more people. And then those people help them. And it's this growth of abundance, right? It's this, everybody ends up growing together. You can offer more classes and more variety when you have more people Mm -hmm. coming in and more demand. And then there's more people that are becoming aware of you. And so then they say, well, actually I'm certified in this class and I would love to help you teach this. And so- I don't think that sometimes people always understand what supporting a small business and, and all of that entails and the ripple effect of that. And then how that actually ends up helping them in the long run, especially when you're talking about a community of women that are gathering continuously, you know, it's, it's very, very similar to the podcast community also is like, if you share it, if you like it, if you talk about it, and if you leave a rating of a review Mm -hmm. that gets it out there that much more, which then helps guests to know, which, you know, that they want to come on the show. I can bring more expert guests on, and, and then it just ripples yeah. out and it just helps it grow. And then everybody's growing in knowledge and community and abundance. It's, it's quite amazing actually. <laughs> so yeah, I get where I get where you're coming from, but I love that you also want to help. And that's like the core root of all of this was not, was not to make money, you know, it's to grow yeah. a community and help women and use your skills. Do you feel like. I mean, you, you telling me your history and me, you telling me your past and everything that you've done leading up to this with like, you have a business degree, but then you went and, you know, you've been within this fitness world, this fitness one for a really long time. So do you feel like mm-hmm. this is all like come together and this is your calling? Cause that's what it sounds like to me. I'm like, she's found her calling. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, <laughs> I definitely feel like that more now. Um, yeah. I wasn't sure to begin with, but yeah, like then I was like, maybe we should have some more kids because if I'm going to keep this going, I need to have kids. You know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. just as joking, but yeah, I don't know if my husband's on board. We'll see. <laughs> like we can have another one. Start him a fitness business. We'll just write him off as a yeah. business expense. <laughs> Um, oh my gosh, I love I that. Know. I don't think you can do that, but maybe. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's super fun. Um, yeah, I just think I didn't realize too, like, I knew I wanted kids, but then I didn't really want kids because I just knew that I would be attached to them, I think. So I was like pushing it off till later in life because I was mm-hmm. 30 when I had Logan. I'm 34 now. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I had them and I was like, oh yeah, you're my whole world. Like I knew you would be. So mm-hmm. like where I go, you're going. Like, yeah. You don't have a choice. So it's nice to be able to like merge those worlds together. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I didn't honestly 
it'd be great to make money, but it's not to make money. What people pay me basically goes to ads or yeah. new equipment or anything. And I, I mean, a lot of it for mom franchises that is similar. I think a lot of it is just moms that are passionate about it and you get paid just enough to keep going right? Um, as a stay-at-home mom. So kind of, it's fun that way. But also this is a business side of me and mm-hmm. from working at Nike, Mm-hmm. They offered free classes years ago at all of their store locations, like free run training, free like hit classes, free strength classes. And they had like a core group of people that came. Mm-hmm. Um, then they tested out charging people and they sold out and like couldn't stop people from signing up. So, and with personal training or anything, like if you don't have skin in the game, like you're paying for something yeah, and you're tired in the morning, you won't come. So part of it is just like to keep you coming, you have to have something um, that's telling you you need to come to class. Yes. Um, So part of it is just like you pay this so that you will come to class this month, Um, whatever that is. But that's part of my reasoning too about I have to charge something because then you will come. Right. (laughs) More. Yes. Um, So yeah, that that which is not everyone. I know some people would come without, but yeah, a lot of people, if even if they've missed a month, if they don't pay a month, they don't come. Then if they pay the next month, then they're there, you know, 50% of the classes or more. So it's just interesting from a business research perspective. That is interesting. And you actually offer the first class for free. So people can kind of like Mm -hmm. try it out, see how they like it, you know, and, and come and, and then that's after that is when they would start paying basically. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. So come try it. Ask, ask, ask your questions. Um, yeah. Any, any questions you have, bring friends. I've had some moms come with a friend cause they don't want to come by themselves in the beginning. So mm-hmm. you can bring a friend and come. Um, yeah, it's really fun, but yes, no, there's, you know, no commitment to signing up. And I mean, I'm even if you commit like, oh, I want to go monthly in the next month, you decide it's not for you. I'm not going to just keep billing you. Like, there's not a contract where you're stuck forever with me. Right. Um, right. If it works for you, it works for you. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I would love for it to work for you. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, or you can drop in if you don't want a month, like the monthly membership way cheaper. You can come to everything, but you can drop in for $10 a class. Mm-hmm. Just drop in. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Whatever works for your mom life. <laughs> I, I love that. And I think I would imagine as you continue to grow, you'll probably end up wrapping that in a, a more structure. But right now, one mm-hmm. of the beautiful things is, you know, it's just over a year old. And so you have the capability for that flexibility. So if people aren't yeah. sure, they should go now and start and try. Exactly. <laughs> Um, exactly. Karen, Karen, I'm so excited for you. <laughs> I, I love this community that you're growing. And I, I think it's so inspiring that you just tried it, that you just went out there and you did it on your own. You, you knew that you had a need for yourself and that you have a skill and a passion for something. And you wanted to take a need that you had of building your own community and meeting moms, but by, by serving them and by helping them and to doing, by doing something with intention. And so I just want to celebrate that. I want to give you like a great big hug and tell you like, this is amazing. And I'm so excited for you. And I've, I, I think I've seriously was like, I mean, you have just under hundred followers on Instagram. And I think I was like one of the first people to follow you because Christina, uh, my friend, Christina shared it and it would have been like mm-hmm. right oh, after okay. you started. And I was like, this is amazing. If I were living in Lewiston and I know you have somebody coming from Orfino, but when I lived in Lewiston, if this yeah. had been available, hands down, I would have joined a community like this. Absolutely. So I think everybody yeah. should at least try it like one time <laughs> and come and see because you're incredible and super inspiring. Yes. And so I just know that people are going to love you and love spending time with these other <laughs> women. Um, so oh, yeah. I'm, I'm excited. Congra- congratulations on it. And keep me posted on how it's going and I'll I'll follow your page. Um, so what is your Instagram page so people can follow you? And I'll also put it in the show notes too. Yeah. So it's just uh, on Instagram, it's heroic mama fitness, um, and Facebook and the website. It's all just heroic mama fitness. 
um, which I had all these marketing plans for that. Like you're a hero to your child. They're coming. They're all in my head. I have so many plans in my head, but <laughs> getting them to come to fruition is hard, but yeah. You'll, so you'll get there. You I love, I mean, you there. have swag, you have a logo. Yeah. I mean, you're, <laughs> you're working on it. Like you're doing it. And I think it's great. Um, and I you did. stuck with it even when yeah. you didn't have anybody coming to your workout. So I'm excited for you. Yeah. The logo was fun. Cause I was like, okay, I'm doing this. I need to get like another mom to help me. So I have a mom friend from high school and college that's graphic design. So I asked mm-hmm. her to do it and she does that on the side. So that was fun. She made a little fun logo, but you know, I was like, yeah. it has to be other moms that support this. <laughs> yes. So that is what yes. we did. I, I love that so much. Um, um, well, thank you for coming on today and having this conversation. I yeah. really wanted to hear your story and hear just how you built a community independently. Like I need a community. I'm going to build a community and here we go. And you're doing it. Yeah. So I appreciate you sharing your story and how you came here and all your traveling and, and things like that. So um, we'll have you back on as it continues to grow. And yeah, un- until then, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing and yeah, helping me grow. Cause I, honestly, actually that could be one of the best moments is the people that help me grow and share all the time. Cause like, they're the ones that bring new people in more than me. If they know people and are like, I've experienced this more than the person that's running the business. It's always those great reviews. So that's yeah. nice. Yeah. To have people sharing it and it supporting. Is. And the support. Oh my gosh. The, the female yeah. camaraderie and support is uh, it's like revolutionary. I feel like for me, I, it's just yeah. so I could cry about it sometimes just the space that I've been in, in the amount of women that are supporting other women is one yeah. of the most beautiful things besides the birth of my children um, that I've witnessed, <laughs> you know, it's just, it's incredible yeah. because it's so genuine. So I am happy to support you and I'm happy to support what you're doing and, and growing and growing all of this. So Thank you so much for coming on today and we'll, we'll chat with you soon. All right. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, Karen. Bye. Mm -hmm. Bye. Hey, sweet mama. Thank you so much for joining Karen and I in this conversational journey today. She's an incredible guest, an incredible, inspiring woman who just took massive action, took matters into her own hands to create her own community. And it's very inspiring for me. It's something that I'm trying to do in my own way as a way to serve other women. And she is using what she knows and what she's good at to serve other women and help a a greater cause other than just herself. And again, like I mentioned in the beginning, this is a win-win situation, even for Karen, you know, she's getting to grow a community and be involved in something, but she's also serving other women as well. There isn't the compromise. This is absolutely win-win best case scenario. So if you liked what you heard today, please give us a like and a share. Don't hesitate to reach out to Karen and all of her contact information can be found in the show notes below. So thank you so much for joining us today on this journey. I look forward to talking to you all again very soon.